September of last year, I was driving from Florida to Virginia to spend the weekend with my parents. It's roughly about 12 hours trip and I've done this drive plenty of times since moving to Florida for a job. In the beginning, I went back home a lot to see my girlfriend. But then we broke up after a while and so my visits were far in between. In any event, I left home at 9pm to avoid traffic and I was about halfway to my destination when I could see a figure moving by the side of the road. As I got closer, I noticed that it was a person, a he to be precise, and it was sticking out his thumb to hitch a ride. I thought about it for a second, but then I decided not to pick him up. Don't blame me, it's the influence of the mainstream media. Can you remember one film that ended well, where a character gladly gives a ride to a stranger? Yeah, I thought so. I felt bad at first, but to be honest, I quickly forgot about it and continued driving. I must have driven for another 10 minutes when I saw another guy hitching a ride. He was doing the same thing as the guy before him, sticking out his thumb and he looked to be smiling as well. I had already passed one guy and I wasn't about to make it unfair for the guy earlier. So I just looked straight and continued driving. Insanely enough, I see another hitchhiker after another 10 minutes of drive. I was going about 80 miles an hour but I slowed the car down to about 40 to look at him closely. I couldn't be sure but it seemed to be the same guy. He was a Caucasian male, had a hat on and was wearing jeans and checkered shirt. I didn't stop for him of course, it was getting really creepy out there. The next 10 minutes of drive was the most tense minutes I had ever spent on the road. I could feel my heart beating faster and my arms feeling a bit numb. So I drove for another 10 minutes, then 20, 30, and thankfully, nothing. The hitchhiker didn't show up. I let out a sigh of relief and thought to myself that I crapped my pants for nothing. What a crazy coincidence I thought and began to relax a little. Some half an hour later, I merged onto a ramp to stop at a service station. Aside from two other cars, the parking lot was empty. There were a bunch of 18-wheelers at the far end of the parking lot, but the drivers were most likely sleeping in their cabin. I stopped in front of the main building and was about to turn off the ignition, but then I couldn't because of what I was seeing in the rearview mirror. It was the hitchhiker, the same guy who was wearing the hat, jeans and checkered shirt. He just stood there about three cars length behind and looked straight at me. I debated for a second if I should call the cops or maybe go into the main building to ask for help or perhaps if I should just leave. I went with the last option. I put the gear to reverse, slowly turned the car to point it toward the exit and by that point I could see the man from the passenger side window. He wasn't smiling anymore. In fact, he had this strange and empty look on his face. I didn't want to seem like I was in a haste and so I slowly moved the gear lever to drive and then gently pressed on the accelerator. I may have moved 10-20 yards max when I checked him out again in the rearview mirror and it was gone. I slammed on the brakes and the car came to a stop. I exited the car, looked around the parking lot, but the hitchhiker was gone. To where though? How does he just disappear in just a few seconds in this enormous parking lot? If he ran into the main building, then I would have seen him run inside. And even if he opted to run toward the road, I would still have seen him. There was quite a distance to cover from where he was standing to either the road or the main building. But dang it, he had vanished into thin air. Thankfully, he stopped showing up for the rest of the drive. I told this story to my mom and dad but they told me that I should stop driving at such late hours because people see things when they get scared. It was just a nice way of saying that I chickened out and had imagined everything. What about you Dennis? What do you think happened to me on that night? I know you've stopped doing the outros but I would love to get your take on it. Thanks for reading buddy, take care. My husband Liam and I, we got married 3 years ago and we bought a house not long after that. It's a 2-story house in a nice neighborhood. 
we got the usual cookie cutter layouts of small front yard and larger backyard. It's got cathedral ceiling, double garage, finished basement, and all that jazz young couples seek nowadays. Oh, by the way, this is beside the story, but don't buy houses with cathedral ceilings. They waste energy, space, and you don't even notice the look after a year. But going back to the story, we had our first child in that house, and we've made lots of wonderful memories during the initial two years. The school for our township had very good reputation, and the plan was to raise our kids in the same house until they get old enough to leave the nest. By the way, I say kids because I'm currently carrying another child in my huge belly. We had always hoped to have three kids, and darn it, we are gonna get it done. So this was about two years after living in that house, and one day, I went to the basement to empty the tank of the dehumidifier. In one corner of the basement, with a small bar that was already built in when we moved in, and I saw a bug crawling out from behind the shelf that held some whiskeys and vodkas. I ran toward the bar, grabbed a tissue, and tried to kill the bug, but the damn little critter was fast. It crawled back into the tiny crack between the wall and the shelf, and I wasn't going to catch it. I was about to go back to the dehumidifier when I saw a small lever resting against the top shelf. It was weird because it looked out of place. Actually, let me correct that. It was out of place. I played around with that by flicking it, pushing it, and then I pulled it toward me. That's when I could hear a clicking sound, and one side of the shelf pulled out just slightly. Like a door, because it was a door. I pulled the shelf toward me, and it opened just like a door. It was really dark on the other side, and I thought for a second that I should wait for Liam to check it out. But then I got too curious. I began swiping on the walls right next to the door, or the shelf if you prefer. Then bingo, I hit a switch, pushed it up, and the lights came on. I couldn't move for a while as soon as I saw what was in front of me. I had never been so terrified in my life. After what seemed like an eternity, I slammed the door behind me, ran upstairs, grabbed my phone and keys, then left the house in my car right away. I called the cops and my husband in the car, and this is the reason why. The room was some type of torture chamber. In the two corners of the room, it had two cages just large enough to fit a person. In the middle of the room, there was a rusty bed, one of those metal ones the hospitals use. The thing had straps for the arms, legs, and the head. At the far end of the room, there were various sharp items that looked sinister. I was horrified just looking at them. So when you combine the secretive door, the room, cages, and the sharp tools, you can only come up with one answer as to how they come together to be used. The police tracked down the previous owner, but it was out of the country by then. They couldn't connect any potential victims to the house, and so they think the previous owner never had the chance to use it. But let's be honest here, that's all conjecture really. The truth is, no one really knows what went on in the secret room. That is, aside from the psycho who built it, and possibly the victims. We moved out of the house right away, and now live in a different house and zip code. Unfortunately though, we still own the old house and it's unlikely that it'll ever sell. My husband says that we should be thankful that we found out about it as early as we did and didn't have to raise our children in that horrible place. He's probably right. Most people in this world are good, I have a firm belief in that. However, it's impossible to ignore the tiny percentage of the evil ones who have monopoly on the terrible doings within our society. That house has done something terrible to me. Trusting people is so impossibly hard now, and I've got such a pessimistic view of the world. I wasn't always like this, and I sincerely wish I could go back to being my old self again. Hey guys, Dennis here. I just want to quickly talk about Brent's story about the hitchhiker. I don't do this anymore, but he asked for it, and so here goes nothing. Way back, something strange had happened to me as well on the road. Coincidentally, I was also driving to Virginia, but I had departed from New York City. I was going there to see my girlfriend in Annandale, and it's about a 6 hours drive if you leave late at night and avoid the traffic. 
I was about two hours out from my girlfriend's and I had this crazy feeling that I saw a person running beside my car. Not close, like right next to my car, but more like off-road by the side of the road right next to the trees that basically followed the road for a few miles. Now mind you, I was doing 70-75 miles an hour and therefore it didn't make sense that a person could catch up. The only problem was, every time I got a glance of the figure that was running next to the trees, it looked to be bipedal, running on two legs. I got to see the figure maybe 5 or 6 times before it disappeared. Now I'm not necessarily saying that what I saw was real, but I am saying that I think I saw something. Something impossible but nonetheless it seemed to be there. I never made a big deal out of it, in fact I didn't even talk about it to my girlfriend. Well, my ex-girlfriend that is. With that said, reading Brent's story reminded me of that experience and made me think about it after all these years. I think we both could have seen something innocuous and turned it into something more ominous, is what I would normally say, but your experience is a little too specific and substantive than mine. You know, maybe there are lots more things that goes on in this world than what our eyes can normally see. And sometimes, by some chance or because your mind is tuned in specific frequency, maybe you are able to experience things that you really aren't supposed to. Who's to say that you did or didn't see that hitchhiker? After all, the figure that I saw on the way to Virginia, it seemed to be as real as anything in this world. But let's just leave it at that since there's really no way to prove or disprove what we saw. I think we just gotta accept that some things will stay shrouded in mystery till the end of times. And that's how I will show myself out. Thanks everyone for watching, I'll see you on the next one, goodbye for now.